Okay. Just a second. I'm getting one more. Okay. Good morning, friends. So good to have so many of you again with me, and I'm so grateful for uh, so many of the kind comments and just great feedback that I've been getting from so many of you. Um, that means a lot to me, so I appreciate it. So we're gonna work today with resistance. And I'm curious to know how many of you are feeling these days. I know for myself, I have these like waves of sadness that come through. Like in general, I'll be okay, and then I'll have this like wave hit me of sadness or this sort of wave of rumination that comes in. Um, I talked to a friend yesterday who feels super angry. I have another friend who has a lot of anxiety and that's been super spiked at this period in our world. And so resistant, resistance is a super common reaction to the fact that life is generally uncontrollable and also unpredictable. So really that hasn't changed. <laughs> the world is always unpredictable and uncontrollable. And so in response to that, we're consistently trying to cling or um, clinch or tighten or control or make something happen just to give ourselves a sense of stability and security. So it's super understandable that there's things we're resisting right now, whether it's cooking or uh, being confined to your home or teaching your children from home. So there's many things to be resistant to um, these days, but the fact is that it's happening. And the more resistant we are, the more sort of heaviness we start to feel, the more um, denseness we start to experience. Um, we get definitely closed down when there's a lot of resistance in our life, and we certainly become less vibrant, less healthy, less alive. Um, on top of that, it's highly exhausting. So I'm wondering if um, some of you are sleeping more these days. I'm finding actually I'm sleeping a lot longer than I typically do um, because all of this resistance that all of us collectively are feeling is pretty tiring. So we're gonna work with it today. And that's why I keep coming back to yoga and over, over and over again is because there's so many practical tools to actually help begin to shift us. So there's a teaching in the yoga tradition called Ishvara Pranidhana, which means surrender, it means sort of softening into, letting go. The interesting part about Ishvara Pranadhan is part of a three sort of um, part teaching, which is tapas, svadhaya, and Ishvara Pranadhan. And I'll explain what all of those Sanskrit words mean. So these three things go together. The first part is tapas, which is actually fire. So we need will, we need determination, we need to be, be willing to work at things. So we do need tapas, but sometimes that comes out when we're in an uncontrollable situation as like uh, massive resistance. We also need svadhaya, which is self-study. So we need to be engaged, but we need to do it with self-awareness. And then the third part, this is really the key part, is we need ishvara pranadhana, which is surrender. So we need to be able to work, step up, but with self-awareness and knowing, being able to discern when surrender, settling, letting go, softening into is essential. So I would say right now, the surrender part is the most important piece of where we're at, because there's a lot of things that we can't take action on right now. So that's what we're going to be doing today, practicing and trying to cultivate more surrender. So just like anything, we can get better at surrender. If we don't feel we're very good at it, we can practice and we can improve our ability to surrender. So let's start by taking a good seat. I always encourage people to sit up on something like a blanket or even a block. You can place your hands on your thighs. You could do a simple mudra today, thumb and point your finger lightly touching. Or I'd actually like to teach you <clears throat> the pranadhana mudra, which is the mudra of surrender. So point your mid middle finger, will come in towards the hand. Thumb touches the ring finger. Pinky finger is sort of just out to the side and then palms face up. So I'll say that one more time. Point your finger middle in towards the palm of the hand. Thumb comes around to touch the ring finger. Pinky fingers out to the side, palms face up. So this is the gesture 
of surrender, pranidhana mudra. So take a nice deep breath in, close the eyes, begin to settle your awareness in and down, all the way down into the pelvis. So we'll start by just deepening the breath. Get another full deep breath in. This time as you exhale, maybe open the mouth, big ha sound. You can even stick your tongue out in a variation of lion's breath. Let's do that again. Deep breath in. As you exhale, maybe sticking the tongue out. Creating that sound of ha in the back of the throat. One more big, deep, cleansing breath. Breath in. Exhale. And as that awareness starts to move more inward, just know that for the next 75 minutes, there's nothing you have to solve. There's no problem to figure out. It's even a chance for us to disconnect from all of the news of this pandemic and just take a break as we go in. We'll be using three tools today to soften our resistance, which is being in the body, working with the breath, and increasing our self-awareness. So those are the three tools of surrender. Being in the body, working with the breath, and increasing our own sense of self-awareness. So let's be in the body, feel the touch of your hands resting on your thighs and observe the sensation of your feet and the feel of your pelvis sort of settling or descending. So much tension and stress is held in the pelvis. So is there a chance for you right now in this moment to even relax the buttocks a little bit more and let those outer thighs start to soften down towards the earth? As you stay in your body, even observe the sensation of your clothes on your skin or the sensation of the air on your skin. And now we add breath as you inhale, moving awareness from your pelvis up to your crown. As you exhale, Awareness from your crown back down to your pelvis. So we'll do this together four more times. Inhale through the nose, up the spine. Awareness stops right at the crown of the head. And then as you exhale, you let that awareness move back down through the spine, settling into the pelvis. So we inhale up the spine, pause with the breath at the top, and we exhale down the spine. Awareness ends at the bottom of the breath deep in the pelvis. So two more of those deep, full breaths here. So when we are able to start to release some of this resistance, we actually begin to realign with our natural state. And our natural state is one of well-being. It's one of wholeness and balance. So today is all about lessening the resistance you are carrying in your body, your mind, even in your breath. All right, if you're still holding Pranidhana Mudra, by the way, this mudra is designed to pull more energy down into the pelvis. So you might be noticing more awareness already in the pelvis just through the simple holding of your hands in this particular way. But we'll release Pranidhana Mudra now and bring hands together in prayer position, a different mudra called Yama Mudra. Thumbs rest gently on the sternum. Take a moment to set intention. Intention is so powerful, especially when we're practicing together like this. Almost a hundred of us here today practicing live together. Take a moment to get clear on what you'd like to receive from this practice today. It might be surrender, it might be softness, it might be less anxiety, more openness, more vitality, more energy. 
And then wherever you are, your bedroom, your kitchen, your basement, we're gonna chant together. Chanting is an opening practice, a clearing practice, a purifying practice. It also, the scientist in me likes to always share these little tidbits. It also calms your amygdala, which is the part of your brain that registers fear. So just chanting the sound of OM can start to already sort of soothe our brain. Let's take a full breath in and then exhale again, open mouth. Ha, as you let all that air go. Let's inhale together to chant the sound of OM. Uh, another full breath in, tracking awareness from that pelvis all the way up to the crown. As you exhale, start to now bow towards your hands and your heart. And then slowly release the hands down. Gently lift up the head and blink the eyes open. All right, Fritz, we're going to start on all fours. So you can place any props that you might have collected off to the side of your yoga mat and come onto all fours, tabletop. And as you arrive in tabletop, no particular pose or movement that we're necessarily needing to do. I just want you to create some movement. So. Uh, maybe let the hips start to move in big circles. You could also do some figure eights with your hips. Beautiful part, no one is watching you today unless your dog is next to you on your yoga mat. So let your body just move in a way. So again, you know, we talk about this all the time. Yoga is not a practice where we add anything new to you. Yoga is a practice of subtraction, not addition. So the practice helps take away, subtract away, the tension, the resistance, the stress, the fear, the thoughts that block you. And so today, already as you're moving like this, you might notice those pockets of resistance in the body. I have them in my hips, in my low back, my neck, my jaw. So we use this practice, can we start to unravel some of that resistance today. If you're moving the hips in some big circles or figure eights, make sure you go both directions, so clockwise, counterclockwise. You can even have your eyes closed right now as you fully drop in. Fully drop into your body. And begin to slow the movements down, coming back to tabletop, wrist underneath the shoulders. Take an inhale, let the pelvis tilt forward as your heart space lifts. And then as you exhale, rounding up like a cat, the belly draws up, the navel draws up, the head releases. So keep going here, moving back and forth between cat and cow. And for those of you who are familiar with the ocean sounding breath, ujjayi sounding breath, sort of the foundational yoga breath, start to work with that now. So that it's a sound of ha in the back of the throat. It's almost like you're fogging a mirror. It's that same sensation. So we breathe in through the nose, we breathe out through the nose, but creating that little constriction in the back of the throat. All right, do one more set of cat-cow and then walk your hands forward, curl your toes under and come into your first downward facing dog. So our goal today is to try to create as much openness in the body as we can. Resistance kind of shows up as tightness and holding in the body. I, I often think about it as like we put on a big coat of armor when we have a lot of resistance. 
So we want to create as much softness and suppleness in the body as possible today. So in this first down dog, again, let your body move. You might start to really undulate through the spine. Walk it out, let your heels drop from side to side. Eventually, inhale, left leg high into the sky. And as you exhale, step the left foot through the hands into a deep lunge. Lower the back knee. Walk your left foot way off to the left and turn your left toes out. So big external rotation of the left leg. Move the pelvis back just a little bit and then draw the belly and ribs up. So this is like the cat pose you just did. Keeping the belly ribs engaged up into the body. Come down onto your forearms and you, you could have a block or a book underneath your forearms here for this first pose, humble pose. So big opener for the hips. And I'd like you to see in this first humble pose how much movement you can add here. Right, so lateral movement of the hips side to side, front to back. So we're starting really low to the earth this morning because that's another way we can start to release resistance is to think about our bodily resistance, our mental resistance moving down and out through our feet into the earth. So we start low today. Stay with the breathing, the sound of your breath. From here, lift the torso up. Step the left foot back. Downward facing dog. And as you find yourself in down dog, not only come back to the sound of your breath, but notice how that left hip feels right now in comparison to your right. Inhale, step the right foot through your hands, deep lunge. Lower the back knee down. Right foot walks way over to the right, and right toes turn out, so you get a, a nice external rotation. From here, pelvis moves back, belly ribs draw up, so you get this engagement into the core. From here, coming down onto your forearms, or all the way down onto the earth. And then again, what happens if you move a little bit more here? Big movement of the pelvis. You can even here make circles with the hips. Many of you have heard me say this a lot, but from a mind-body perspective, emotion and our feelings are lodged in the body or can get stuck in the body, especially if we don't allow that emotion to move through us. And it's believed that fear and shame live deep down into the pelvis. So any kind of fear, anxiety we carry often gets sort of lodged in the hips and the pelvis. So as we stay low to the earth here to begin with, move the pelvis, bringing more, just even simply awareness into the pelvis, we have this possibility about starting to release it. All right, move the right foot back towards the center of the mat, hands on either side of the front foot. Step back to downward facing dog. Shake out the head a little bit here. Let the face relax. And take your feet wider in this down dog. So feet come all the way towards the edges of the mat. Gives you again space to let your pelvis rock left to right. From here, hands walk all the way back towards your feet. So it's a wider forward fold, feet nice and wide. Bring just a little bend in the knees. So with a bend in the knees, you might even feel your torso drop slightly deeper over the thighs. Bring your hands to your waist. Give just a little push. So your pelvis is pushing down, elbows draw together. And on an inhale, rise all the way up. All right, walk towards the front of the mat. We're gonna work on setting up a really good mountain pose, which again is grounding and stabilizing. So look down at your feet. Feet should be hip distance width apart. 
Line up the outer edges of the feet so that they're parallel to the edges of your yoga mat. And then starting with just your left foot, press your big toe mound into the earth. Press your inner heel into the earth. Now the little toe mound and the outer heel. Toes will be spread, but now relax the left toes down to the earth. And just pause and notice how different your left side feels right now in comparison to your right. Like I feel super rooted and grounded on my left side. Let's repeat it on the right side. Lift and spread the toes. Press the big toe mound into the earth, the inner heel, the little toe mound and the outer heel, and then relax the toes down. Allow there to be just a slight little bend in the knees, so not locking the knees out, but keeping that nice bend. Move the pelvis and the hips back, so move the thighs back. And then from here, draw the belly ribs into the body. Lengthen up, shoulders draw back, arms relaxed at the side of the body. Nice steady gaze, straight out in front of you. Maybe find a point in front of you about horizon level where you can just allow your gaze to soften. All right, so this is called alignment. This is called your optimal blueprint. This is not normally the way we stand in line at the grocery store, right? We're usually more like this. Hunched forward, thighs pop forward. So when you get into this optimal alignment, this is when our body works best. This is actually when your body's in less resistance. So now let's add that tool of breath. Inhale, arms float up into the sky. We're just gonna stay standing here a couple rounds in mountain pose. Exhale, hands back down to the earth. So maybe use this exhale to use that open mouth ujjayi breath. Inhale, arms float up as you exhale, big hop. You can even stick the tongue out for that modified lion's breath. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. And inhale, float the arms up. This time, as you exhale, now float all the way forward into the forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen up halfway, long spine, belly draws into the body. Exhale, fold. And do that again. Inhale, lengthen your heart forward. So put your heart out there. And then exhale, Big sigh, blow out every bit of air and notice how much deeper you can fold. One more time, inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. On this next inhale, step the left foot back into a deep lunge. Hands on either side of the front foot, back leg stays nice and buoyant. So it's not uncommon to let this back leg drop, but you really start to dump into the, the frontal hip even into the low back. So trying to keep that back leg a little bit more buoyant and lifted. We'll take a deep breath to lengthen out through the spine and then exhale slowly lower the left knee down to the earth. Keep that back toes curled under and then inhale, rise up. For more stability, you could walk your right foot off to the right just a bit more. So we're gonna bind our hands. And actually today we're gonna work with a lot of binding in this practice because binding teaches us what resistance is like. And in the midst of resistance, can we surrender, soften? So already we're gonna add a little bind. So interlacing fingers in the small of the back. The knuckles press into the sternum. Lengthen up, draw the shoulder blades, so squeeze those shoulder blades together. Knuckles keep pressing into the sacrum. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, maybe start to pulse with the pelvis forward and back a couple times. So as you're allowing the pelvis to pulse forward and back, knuckles continue to press into your low back, shoulders drawing together, elbows drawing together. Find a steady gaze point in front of you where you can soften your gaze. And then, this is sort of added bonus here, if you isometrically try to pull your fingers apart, you'll feel a little bit more fiery around those shoulder blades. All right, so we've added just a little bit of bind, a little constriction in the hands. Now, release the hands, feel some freedom. Inhale, float arms up into the sky for Anjane Asana. We'll take a deep breath in to lengthen up, maybe curl back just a bit. Exhale, hands come down. Lift the back knee, step back, downward facing dog. 
can walk it out a little bit. Add whatever kind of movements feel good to you in this pose. I have a very active dog pose. My dog is rarely still. I think that all these little micro movements you make allow you to start to soften these pockets of resistance that we all carry. All right, inhale, float forward to plank. Plank, wrists are over, or shoulders are over the wrist, or just a bit forward. Exhale, back to dog. Again, inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, back to dog. Inhale, forward, all the way. Pause here, feel your strength, pressure. Point your finger down just a bit more, and then draw that belly way up into the body. Exhale, lower. Your knees can always come down first if that's a better option for you. All right. All the way down on the earth, front of the body, deep on the earth. Extend the arms now out to the side. If you can, interlace those fingers. Again, it's that same action we just did. If that's too hard on your shoulders, your palms will just face in towards one another. Tops of the feet press down, firm legs. Inhale, lift the chest. Now, if your fingers are interlaced, maybe even see about lifting the arms away from the body. We're going to stay here for a couple breaths. Strong legs. Inhale, lift the chest, knuckles back. Exhale, you'll soften down about halfway. When this next inhale comes, lengthen up a bit more. Exhale, lower. All right, another one. Inhale, lift. This time, lift the legs as well, so everything is lifted. Exhale, we're going to lower, release everything, arms relaxed down, legs relaxed, turn onto one cheek. Ah, releasing resistance down through your front body. So this is from so many of the wisdom traditions. They talk about how Mother Earth can sort of soak up our emotional, physical imbalances. And certainly we've been dumping a lot at Mother Earth lately. But just feel your body, your front body resting on the earth. Take a breath in and as you exhale, ah, can you surrender? Just relax a little bit more into the earth. Let's take one more deep breath in here. Watch yourself on this exhale, surrender just a little more. You might feel your buttocks relax or your legs relax a bit more. And slide your hands back in alignment with your chest. Curl your toes under. Come back up through downward facing dog. On an inhale, step the left foot between the hands, deep lunge and slowly lower the back knee down to the mat. Come upright, and release the fingers in the small of the back. Now, consciously notice which thumb is on top, and you're gonna switch it out so the opposite thumb is on top. This will be your non-dominant clasp. Once again, the inhale, lengthen up, draw the shoulders back, elbows hug together, knuckles are pressing into the sacrum, and then begin to pulse forward and back a couple times with the pelvis. Find a steady gaze point. If your eyes are unconsciously darting around the room, it means you have more anxiety. So if you can steady your gaze point at one spot, that starts to calm the brain. Some of you might notice that's really challenging though, which means your eyes are probably darting more than you know. Isometrically pull the fingers apart, really draw those shoulder blades together on the low back. And then as you keep awareness, so remember three ways to release resistance is by being in the body, being with our breath, and by enhancing our awareness. So keeping your awareness now, observe what happens when you release that bind of the hands. Ah, little freedom, float arms up into the sky. And stay here in Anjane Asana. Inhale, lengthen up, curl back a little bit. Exhale, settle deeper into the front thigh. One more breath. Exhale, lower the hands. Lift the back knee. Step back, down dog. Once 
Once again, take the feet wide on the yoga mat and just sway your hips from left to right. And start to walk your hands backwards. So you arrive once again in Uttanasana, shake that head out. Move the jaw from side to side, maybe buzz the lips. Lessening resistance in the face. Hands come to the pelvis, draw shoulder blades again together. Inhale, rise. All right, once again, walk towards the front of the mat. <clears throat> I'll stand sideways so you can see where we're going. We're going to start with just a little bend in the knees. Pelvis moves back. Heel of the hand is right at the tops of the thighs, pressing those thighs back. Trying to attempt to get the sit bones to lift up so you reestablish a nice curve in the low back. I'm going to add some arms this time. So inhale, arms float up, arms parallel to the floor. Take your right arm underneath your left, bringing the backs of the hands together, or maybe the palms of the hands together. So these are eagle arms, we call them. As you maintain this sort of squat pose, if this is too much, you can certainly stand up, but this is really good to get the pelvis back. I'm gonna do a couple sets of cat-cow with eagle arms. So as you inhale, your heart extends towards your elbows, your gaze might lift. As you exhale, pull back, round back. So you're rounding a little bit more here. Inhale, heart forward towards the elbows. Exhale, round back. So you're really activating the forearms and the palms together. One more set. Inhale, heart forward, gaze lifts. Exhale, round back. All right, release the arms. Again, float those arms up. Ah, feel the release. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, pranam, or ardha uttanasana, straight back, flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, step directly back to downward facing dog. Again, walk it out a little bit. Inhale, right leg into the sky, bend the right knee and start to open into a wild dog. So toes of the right foot spread, reaching towards the wall behind you. Inhale, straighten the right leg. And as you exhale, draw the right foot through your hands into a deep lunge. Move your right foot over to the right. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. So to get steady here, you might even have your hands on your pelvis to begin, just as a way to stabilize. From here, we're gonna bind once again. So arms come back, interlace the fingers, draw the shoulders back. You can keep elbows bent. You could straighten your arms as well if you like. Keep pulling the ribs into the body. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, shoulder blades hug together, heart lifts. Again, inhale, exhale, settle into that front thigh, pull the shoulders together. Inhale, now exhale, feel the release, the freedom, arms float up. One more breath here, really curl back, exhale, fold, step back, downward facing dog. Come home to your breath. Just trying to realign here with our natural state. As we release resistance, we automatically find more peace and well-being just because that's what we naturally have within us. All right, inhale forward to plank. And we'll go back to dog. Let these movements be fluid. You're going to do a total of three of them. The inhale is what floats you forward. The exhale is what pulls you back to dog. This is really good core strength. It also connects us with our breath. Exhale, lower all the way down onto the belly. Flatten the feet. Again, once again, straighten the arms. If you have a tight low back, take your feet wider on your mat. Extend the arms, interlace the fingers or palms face in. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, soften down halfway. 
Inhale, rise up again, a little higher. Shoulder blades hugging together. Exhale, soften halfway. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the legs. Exhale, soften halfway, but hold the pose. One more breath, lift everything up. And then exhale, release everything down. Surrender all the way down. Back onto one cheek. Maybe the opposite cheek. Let your pelvis rock a bit. And then start to direct breath deep down into the belly. So inhaling into the abdomen. Exhale, every exhale. Where else could you surrender? Maybe the buttocks, maybe the heels, maybe the belly. This rest in yoga following hard work is as key, as important as the hard work. So give yourself this chance to rest. You might actually really resist the rest, which may mean you need more of it. All right, hands come back in alignment with the chest. We'll lift back to downward facing dog. This time, it's the left leg that floats into the sky, opening into wild dog. Pull belly ribs into the body. Really stretch that foot way over to the wall. Inhale, straighten the legs, step the left foot through the hands, deep lunge. Before you come up, walk the left foot off to the left. I think that just gives you a nice wider base from which to work. Hands can come to the waistline so you get grounded and rooted. Once again, we'll add the bind. So fingers come behind you. Again, opposite thumb on top. Knuckles press into the sacrum. Draw the shoulder blades together. Take a breath in. As you exhale, you might now start to straighten the arms and lift the heart a bit more. Inhaling, pulling the shoulder blades together. Maybe the hands are sliding down that back leg. Another breath here. Now stay with self-awareness. So as you release, well, at least for me, like there's a lot of freedom in the release. Feel that freedom expand up. So this is a variation of warrior one, sometimes called a crescent lunge. Inhale, exhale, curling back. These poses create a lot of strength and endurance in our legs. They're also highly grounding. Inhale, exhale, lower. All right, step back, downward facing dog. All right, this time bend the knees a lot. With your knees bent, you can not only move your pelvis back, you can also bounce your pelvis up and down. You can even do some jumps here if you like. Maybe on this next jump, jump forward, forward fold, shake out the head. Inhale, lengthen the spine forward. Exhale, big ha, big surrender, big releasing of resistance. Inhale, now float the arms out to the side or forward. And you come all the way up. Exhale, hands down in front of the heart. All right, we just pause here. Ah, so releasing, unraveling resistance. The beauty is you actually don't even have to know where your resistance lives. I promise you, you have some in your body, in your heart, and in your mind. It's part of being human. But this practice helps clear away the resistance. It sort of clears away the cobweb, so to speak. All right, releasing the hands. We're going back to where we were and, and practicing eagle arms on the other side. Let's add that little squat action again. Thighs back, sit bones lifting up, belly ribs drawing to the body. Keeping all of that inhale arms up. Left arm under right this time, palms together, or backs of the hands together. Lift the elbows up so they're more shoulder height. Inhale, heart extends towards the elbows. Gaze lifts as you exhale, round back. Pull ribs in, it's sort of like cat pose here. Inhale, heart extending forward. Exhale, round back. 
One more time. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, round back. Lift the elbows up a little more. Hug forearms, palms in. Then release the arms. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. All right, before you step back into down dog, if you have a strap or a belt, have that at the front of your mat. And then from here, step all the way back into downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg into the sky. Exhale, step the left foot through deep lunge. You could also have a black nearby as well. Black strap nearby for where we're headed. All right, turn your back foot down. Inhale, rise up. Vira Bhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Palms, arms parallel to the floor. Gazes out over that front finger, that front middle finger. This pose, by the way, such a pose of strength, stability, grounding, and endurance. All those things we need right now, those qualities we need to be practicing. Take a breath. Now from here, side angle. Drop your left forearm down to your left thigh. Bend this top elbow so you can really pull the shoulder back. As you pull your right shoulder back, there's a little twist here as well. Can you feel your belly twist up to the right? Then straighten that arm. If you have shoulder issues, you can keep elbow bent. Otherwise, straighten that top arm. Side angle pose. Now, you can stay here. But since we're practicing binds, if you'd like to bind, take this top hand down to your waist and then slide it around towards your low back. Drop your left hand towards the floor. Stick your seat way back. Extend your left arm underneath. You maybe see about interlacing your fingers and then opening up again for a bound side angle. Take a breath. You really have to root the right foot down, lengthen out, draw the top shoulder back. Feel the intensity of being in a bind. Can you soften and surrender? Maybe it's just your tongue surrendering away from the roof of the mouth. Take another breath. Ah, exhale, release. Step back to down dog. Taking a child's pose would be a nice option for you. Always feel that freedom to move into a more restful child's pose. Knees wide, hips back. Whether you're staying in down dog or taking a child's pose, find your breath. Breathe. So you release resistance by being in the body, energetically clearing up those pockets of tension. We do it with our breath, and we do it by our self-study, spadhaya, our sense of awareness. All right. If you're not in down dog, We'll rejoin in down dog. Moving into this on the other side. Inhale, right leg floats into the sky. Exhale, step the right foot through. Turn the back foot down. Inhale, rise up. Vira Bhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. This pose that promotes strength and endurance, grounding, stability. So there's less fear in this pose, or this pose can help us release fear. So it's the grounded warrior, not the fearful warrior. We'll take a breath from here, move into side angle, right forearm to right thigh. Start with the bent left elbow, so you can pull the elbow back, pull the shoulder back, and twist your belly and chest towards the sky. By the way, that left foot is so rooted right now as well. Straighten the top arm up. You can stay here. You can bind. By the way, if you couldn't interlace fingers last time, that's where that strap might come in handy. Right hand comes down to the earth. Stick the seat way back. Right hand comes underneath. The left hand finds the strap. Inhale, realign front shoulder with front leg. Pull the shoulder back. Root the left foot down, lengthen out. Stay here, you're all bound up. What happens when you're bound? Can you? Find some peace. Can you be with your breath? You may be using a more intense ujjayi sounding breath right now. Take another inhale and then exhale. Ah, let go. Notice the freedom that comes in when we release resistance. Yes. 
All right, let's all take a child's pose right now. So slowly lowering your knees down to the mat. Knees go nice and wide. Big toes touch. Forehead to the floor. You can either keep your arms stretched forward, you can stack your hands, forehead to the stacked hands, or you can bring your hands all the way around towards your heels. We're gonna stay here for four more deep breaths, inhaling through the nose. Exhale, you can really feel and hear your breath on that exhale since you're so close to the earth. And use each exhale to release resistance, mental resistance, fear, anger. Let it go, let it be sort of purified out of you in this practice. Inhale, come back up, back to all fours. Take an inhale, tilt the pelvis forward, lift the heart. Exhale, round, last down dog here. Once again, feet wide. Take the hands back, forward fold, shake out the head. Hands come to pelvis, root the pelvis, shoulder blades draw together, inhale, rise. All right, last standing pose before we move onto our backs. So we've done eagle arms both sides. Now we're gonna do full eagle pose by adding the legs. Eagle pose really is a bound pose. So you're not only binding legs, but you're binding arms. So quite normal for us to feel resistant, to feel anxious, to feel a little overwhelmed. If I stop talking for a while, it's because I usually uh, lose my breath a little bit in eagle pose. By the way, it is not one of my favorite poses. But I practice it to help me see that I can be in resistance and stay calm. And then what I want you to really watch is that liminal space when you eventually release eagle and then you can expand out. So I want you to watch what it's like to be bound and what it feels like to let it go. All right, so let's start with our right foot, bend the knees. And again, push the pelvis back, push the thighs back a little bit. Weighing, uh, bringing a little bit more weight into your right foot, cross your left knee over your right foot. Right toe, or left toes can come to the earth, or they can wrap around towards your calf. Inhale, arms forward. We're gonna take a left arm underneath right. Backs of the hands together or palms together. I'll go sideways here. Keep moving the pelvis back, lift the elbows up, belly ribs pull into the body. Find a gaze point, so find somewhere in front of you on the earth where you can steady your gaze. Keep pulling the belly and the ribs into the body. Again, when there's this much resistance, this much bound energy, could you relax your shoulders down? Could you relax your jaw? You even wanna add the forward folds you can Stay relaxed. All right, inhale, release, step your left foot way off to the side, right foot off to the side and extend your arms up. So we sometimes call this starfish pose. So this is sort of the counter action to being all bound up. Now we extend out. For me, this actually feels glorious. I love this feeling. But I've actually had a lot of students tell me they don't like this feeling. Like this is where they find resistance. So that's where that beautiful self-study comes in. And whatever you're most resistant to, can you stay with it, breathe into it, not run from it. All right, palms together, hands down in front of the heart. Bring your feet back together so they're underneath the pelvis and just pause, feel. Notice if you're feeling a little bit more vital energy in the body. I definitely am feeling more alive. I'm feeling more lightness as well. All right, we're gonna do this on the other side. So start by bending the knees, thighs back. I love this action of heel of the hand to the thighs. Press those thighs back, get your seat back. Big reset for your nervous system when we get our thighs back. All right, our weight's coming now into the left foot. Cross your right leg over your left. Toes can be at the earth. They can wrap all the way around towards your inner calf. 
Keep moving the pelvis back, arms come up. All right, now it's right arm underneath the left arm, palms together. Again, really hug in, hug forearms, inner thighs in, move pelvis back. Belly pulls in, rib cage pulls in, keep hugging forearms and then steady your gaze. If you fall out of this pose, it's okay. Can you work with non-resistance or non-attachment about this pose, having to look a certain way? Relax the jaw, can you let the shoulders soften a bit more? Take a breath, exhale, stay here. Feel the support of all these people watching this together right now. And then inhale, relief perhaps. Open up, starfish, take a breath. Lift the heart a little more. Exhale, pull the hands down in front of the heart. Now widen the feet even more. So taking the feet very wide, turn the toes in just slightly. We're gonna go into Prasar to Padatanasana, wide-legged forward fold. This is key, pelvis roots down. As you root the pelvis, then you can lengthen taller. Shoulders pull together, heart lifts. There's a little heart lifting action here, and then exhale, hinge forward. Coming all the way down into the wide-legged forward fold. Hands underneath shoulders. I'm not going to stand in or you won't be able to hear me, but I will hold space for all of you to be in this wide-legged forward fold. There's a little bit more weight coming towards the inner edges of the feet in this deep, wide-legged forward fold. Ideally, the crown of the head is sort of releasing down towards the earth. So you could have a block underneath your crown if it's getting close. For those of you at home who have a headstand practice, you could do a headstand right now. It's the same action. It's an inversion. Anytime the head is below the heart, we are in an inversion, which is calming. It's very calming for the brain to be in an inverted place. As you stay in this wide-legged forward fold, draw the belly into the body a little deeper and see if that allows you to fold just slightly more. We're gonna stay here for two more breaths, adding open mouth, ujjayi. So inhale, as you exhale, open the mouth, maybe even stick out that tongue. One more of those, inhale, exhale, big ha. Bring your hands to your waist and just pause for a moment. Root the pelvis, draw the shoulder blades together, then big inhale. There's a lightness with the inhale that will float us all the way back up to standing. And then heel toe, heel toe, feet back together. Underneath you, palms come together in front of the heart. Ah, surrender, settling. All right, we're gonna come down to the earth. Um, we'll come down through Malasana or squat pose, another grounding, stabilizing pose. So feet go wide, edges of the mat, toes curl out, so again, external rotation. Breathe in, as you inhale, awareness from the pelvis all the way up to the crown. There's this expansive energy up. And then as you exhale, settling, sinking down into squat pose. All right, I conveniently have a block in front of me, so if you, if you do have that, is in front of you as well. You can even play with going into crow pose. Palms come together in front of the heart from Malasana. And if this is murderous for your knees, you just don't do it. You sit down right now. You don't have to stay in a place that really creates over extended amounts of resistance. If you want to play with arm balance, you might place your hands, hug your legs in. If you have that block there, it's kind of convenient. You can see about lifting the feet up. And then eventually, we're going to all sit all the way back, extending the legs forward. All right, pull the flesh away from your sit bones. Ha! Ah, take a breath in. Exhale, settle. All right, if you do have a folded blanket, you might like to use it now, just underneath your seat. It's not essential, but 
most of us are pretty rounded in our low back when we sit in Dandasana or staff pose. So having that little blanket underneath you can be helpful. All right, we're gonna move into a seated forward fold twist sequence here. We'll start with the right leg. So I like to take my right hand and slide it under my right knee to help bend the knee. Now I obviously don't need the help of my hand, but this is um, energetically like a kind and compassionate thing. So we're trying to be extremely nurturing to our body, especially as we're cooling down. Take your right foot now, place it in your upper inner thigh, and then allow that right knee to move out to the side. Left leg is strong, so it's not in Shavasana, but it's engaged, my toes are spread, this left thigh is pressing down. And then inhale, really lengthen up through the spine. Float arms up, take a breath here, lengthen up even more, and then exhale, fold over this front leg. Hands can come to the earth, you can hold on to your foot. If you're quite open, you can hold on to a block. We're gonna stay here for five breaths. As you inhale, breathe into that low belly. Use the exhale to release, to soften. So if you think about the breath cycle, the inhale is expansion, it's taking in, the exhale is letting go. So this practice of surrender, Ishvara Pranidhana, is really apparent on our exhale. So you might even slow your exhale down. Maybe even hold the breath out for a bit. rising back up. Hand comes to the outside of the right knee and again I gently guide the right knee back to the midline. Right foot steps over the left leg. Going into a twist now. You can take um, whichever variation you like. Another nice variation here is to bend your bottom leg, your left leg, and slide it around so you're in a little deeper twist. For me I prefer straight leg but do what feels best for you. Really pull the leg in towards the body, and our first action is to sit as tall as we can, long spine. Left arm out to the side. As you exhale, wrap the left arm around the right leg or hook the elbow and begin to twist to the right. So we're gonna stay in this twist for five breaths. So as you inhale, you're lengthening up, and as you exhale, you're twisting to the right. And that twist actually originates on your left side. So can you feel your left waistline moving more to the right as you really anchor this right hip down? Twist purify us in a really deep way. So right now as you are twisted here, those inter internal organs are actually really compressed. So the idea is when we eventually release the twist, those organs that have been compressed get a new flush of prana energy flow. So hold this twist. Right now you're most likely looking down towards the floor. Hold the twist, but just now look out over your left shoulder. So we get just a little twist for the neck. Could you lift your sternum just a little bit? Take a breath. Stay here, one more breath. Where else could you exhale, surrender? Shoulders down, hips down. All right, on this next exhale, slowly come back ah, to center. Release the right leg, shake out the knees a little bit. So we wanna be, part of what we're training in yoga is our awareness. And when we train our awareness, we start to wake up for not only sensations that change and shift in the body when you re release a twist, but we start to wake up for those moments in life that are really sweet that we otherwise miss, like the rain coming down or the way that the snow was on the trees yesterday. So we're training awareness in our body so that we train our ability to really be more present in our life. So let's do the second side, left knee now. Left foot comes to the upper inner thigh, open that left knee out to the side. This is Janu Shirsasana. Right leg is strong, lengthen arms up into the sky, and as you exhale, fold deeply over 
that front thigh. Breathe deeply into the belly. Using the exhale to practice this art of surrender. Can I surrender over the leg? Could I soften that right hamstring just a little more? Use the exhale to also go deeper into this pose. On this next exhale, lengthen your exhale just a little more. So slow down the exhale, and then if you can, hold the breath out for a moment. And when you're ready, on this inhale, rise up. Take your left hand to the outside of the left knee. Compassionately guide it back to center. We need to be so nurturing and compassionate to ourselves these days. Left foot over the right leg, especially if you're living in close quarters with family members that aren't always there, right? I found myself less patient at times with my kids, but I have to have compassion that we're together a lot more. Right arm out to the side, twisting to the left. I'm going to stay for about five breaths. So if you can, let your gaze soften over your left shoulder. And then feel this twist originating from your right side. It's as if you're trying to move your right waistline over to the left. But keep lengthening up. Keep letting that heart space lift. Every exhale, a chance for you to practice what it's like to surrender, to soften. Inhale, uh, and then exhale, slowly come back to center. You notice that moment when you release, there is sort of a energetic drawing into the torso. Straighten both legs, bounce the knees just a bit. One more pose. Both feet come together, Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together. Press the soles of the feet actively into one another as you inhale and lengthen up. So as I lengthen my spine up, I feel more intensity in my inner thighs. And you're thinking about extending this right knee laterally over to the right as you extend your left knee laterally over to the left. You can stay here upright. You can also add forward fold to intensify sensation. Forearms, elbows pressing into the lower legs. And then as you, this is a big opening for the pelvis, the hip creases. Just notice for a moment if your jaw is clenching. Can you soften your jaw, soften your face, soften the space between the eyebrows, soften the forehead, the temples. On an inhale, rise all the way up, knees come together, straighten the legs forward. We're going to come down onto our back now. We'll do a couple cool downs. I'll show you the cool downs, but I'm not going to stay in them just so you can continue to hear me. And I'll also then be upright as we move into Shavasana. So arms come up, shoulder height. So make this descent be really slow and conscious. So remember, we release resistance by being grounded. This is a grounding pose. Being with our breath and increasing awareness. So start to round, tuck the chin. And you go super slow here. Legs are still strong and engaged. Toes are still spread. Ribs, belly pulling into the body. Oh, it's so hard to go slow. The body wants to quake. I can feel my core resisting right now. Stay with it. Oh, eventually coming all the way down onto your back. Start by bringing your knees in towards your chest. 
and just rocking side to side a couple times. Open the legs up towards the sky, soles of the feet parallel to the floor, hold on to the edges of the feet and then rock side to side. Slowly release the feet to the floor. If you have a yoga block, I'm ending actually every one of my classes with supported bridge pose, legs up this into the sky, or sort of a supported shoulder stand. So I'll talk you through the different variations. If you have a yoga block, lift the pelvis up, place the block underneath the pelvis, and just pause here in Satu Bandha. So you really want to work on resetting the shoulders. Chest lifts and the shoulders draw underneath you. This is a big chest heart opener. Arms out to the side. You could stay here. This, by the way, this pose and the one I'm going to talk you into next are great immune system building poses. So remember our bodies are actually naturally designed to heal and stay well. Our natural state is health and wellness. And so if we can really remove these energetic blocks, and the mental blocks and the emotional blocks, we tend to just stay in a state of health and wellness. So legs floating up in the sky now. So this is one variation. Now, if you do not have a block at home, you can do a shoulder stand variation. It's actually more of an elbow stand. For us to really do shoulder stand safely, you need a bunch of blankets. But you can lift the pelvis up, hold on to the back of the pelvis. Now my weight here is in my elbows, not in my shoulders. And you can see it's like almost like I'm resting my pelvis in my hands. So both of these, whether you're doing um, supported bridge with your legs up or shoulder elbow stand variation, these are inversions again. They calm the nervous system they're really good at resetting our mind, stabilizing our mind. So let's stay here for another full minute. If this gets too intense, then you honor your body and you come out of it when you're ready. But find the sound of your breath here. Thirty more seconds here. All right, whichever variation you're in. Slowly bending the knees, coming all the way down. We'll pause here in constructive rest. So feet on the floor, hip distance width apart, hands rest on the belly. And as you pause here in constructive rest, breathing deeply into the belly, you might begin to just tune in if there's any more resistance in the body, if there's any other poses that you could do right now that would help you soften, feel the space to do those poses or stretches. Otherwise, when you're ready, I'd like you to settle into Shavasana. And just a word about Shavasana. So when I do practices at home, when I watch teachers at home, on the computer, I often will skip Shavasana, and I'm urging you today to stay with Shavasana. We're gonna be in about a five minute Shavasana today, and it really truly is the most important practice of today. This is where you settle into more of a receptive place and where you really do align body, mind, heart, 
and that was our work today is to release resistance so if there's resistance to staying still with yourself for five minutes I get it I've been there believe me but give yourself this space of rest and it's almost as if in Shavasana we get out of our own way get out of your own way and let your body reset itself to this natural state of well-being and vitality and health wellness so I will hold the space here in silence for the next four minutes and again I encourage you to stay stay So remain still and receptive. As you stay in this still place, just let your awareness expand a bit. And then watch your capacity. All of you have it. Watch your capacity as you stay here with yourself to just soften a little bit more just be 5% more. You might notice that your shoulders could relax or your buttocks could unclench or your belly could grow even more soft. And notice 
notice how in this highly relaxed and open receptive state that there is both a sensation of being heavy and grounded at the same time that you also feel pretty light and expansive and spacious. So now just bring a little bit of movement into your fingers and your toes. You could stretch your arms up overhead, move. Eventually rolling onto your right side and then we'll meet back up here to end and to close together. Sitting upright, Sukhasana or easy pose, tall spine, Vibrant body, expansive heart, calmer mind. Let's bring hands together in front of the heart. I'm gonna end today with a beautiful image that a teacher taught me years ago and I come back to this imagery all the time. I want you to imagine yourself now on a river in a canoe. And notice right now what it's like to turn the canoe and to try to paddle upstream. Notice how much work this is, how much effort this is. This is the ultimate resistance. We're going against the flow of what's happening. We're trying to make it different. We're trying to use our willfulness. And yet nothing we want or need is upstream. So imagine yourself in that canoe, just allowing the canoe to right itself, floating downstream, trusting that everything you need is downstream. Moving into that place of non-resistance, being in the flow of your life. Thank you all for your presence. Namaste. So much love. May you bring these non-resistant, more open minds and bodies and hearts now into your family, into your work, into your dealings today. Thank you. Stay in touch. Dr. Yoga Mama, M O M M A dot com, Heartland Yoga. Sign up for my email list. That's how you'll get all the information about what's upcoming. We're going to continue to do some free classes in the weeks to come, so stay tuned. I'll be here again free Thursday and Saturday at 9. And then I have a couple online courses coming up. One is starting this Wednesday night. You don't have to be live with me, you'll get all the recordings. Um, it's yoga for the impact, which is for the highly sensitive. So some of you are feeling really um, just sort of shifted around by everything that's happening in the world. This would be a great course. And then four weeks later, starting April 22, I'm teaching a course called Remind. It's all about using the tools of yoga, psychology, and neuroscience to enhance our emotional resiliency. Again, something we all need. So you can find all of that on my Dr. Yoga Mama page, Heartland Yoga page. Um, respond to me in the chat box about anything you need. Love the feedback. And again, stay well. So much love to all of you. Take care.